Hey guys, it's David from 3D Make It, and today we're going to be talking slicers, specifically with mesh fixing. So we want to get a model loaded into our slicer and ready to go even before we hit slice. Let's go! So we're going to be looking at three different tools today for mesh fixing. But before we get there, why do we need mesh fixing? Well, mesh fixes are necessary because not all sites that we get models from or even CAD software that export the models do a great job when they place the model up for upload or download or export. So we can get models that aren't watertight, which means they have holes in the mesh, or we can get models that have inverted triangles or facets. So when we're trying to slice those things, our slicer might not know how to deal with the backwards triangles. So when we talk Thingiverse, Thingiverse is a great site with lots of resources, but one of its downfalls is that models haven't been vetted. They haven't been printed necessarily on the site. The other site that we use a lot is my mini factory, which the models have been vetted. So that's just kind of a, an example of the sites available out there and how we can use them. All right, here we are on Thingiverse and we just have an example to use for one model. Uh, it's a great model. There's nothing wrong with the way it looks when it prints, but we're gonna be looking at this creeper from Minecraft. So let's click that. We're just gonna download the head part, but you can see it's actually three pieces. So you get the body, you get a head, and you get the pin so that the head can swivel. So it's kind of cool, but we're just gonna look at the head for right now. So let's go into the thing files here. We'll scroll down, and then we're just going to grab the head file. All right, so the next model that we're gonna look at is actually a standard that's been around for a long time. So we're gonna look for 3D Benchy. I think all of us have printed this more times than we would like to admit, but here's the Benchy model. So we'll just click that. And again, I'm just gonna click files and we're gonna download the full Benchy. So just 3D Benchy STL here, that's what we're working with. So the first thing we're gonna do is load it up in Kira. And there's an extension in Kira that you have to install from the marketplace for all of this to work. I'll walk us through that, but let's jump into Kira. All right, so here we are in Kira. So the first thing we have to do is click on the marketplace button in the top right hand corner here and we're going to be looking for a plugin and the one we're going to want to install is called mesh validation or mesh repair so once we get our plugins loaded here we can install that all right so our plugins have loaded up we have the list you can scroll through it if you wanted to uh, right now it's in the featured however so that makes it easy but if it's not up in the top hand corner there just make sure that you scroll down but we're looking for this mesh tools one so we're going to click that and we're going to install and once the install is finished here uh, just agree to the public license once the install is finished we just have to quit Kira and reopen it so we'll be right back once Kira reopens Perfect, Kira is back. So it does take a second for the program to reload as we all know with Kira. But once it loads back up, what we can do is we'll open our model. So let's go file, open, we'll go to our downloads folder cause that's where they'll be. And then let's grab the creeper head first. So right away, we can see here that there's a mesh tools that pops up now and it says the model texture creeper head is not watertight and may not print properly check x-ray views and repair so that's awesome if we rotate around the model and zoom in we can actually see that on the creeper head it's actually given us uh, an area of effect so we have that kind of splotchy pattern instead of like the model face that we usually would see. So it's letting us know that there's some issues in validation up there. So we can also see that there's some manifold errors, which means inverted triangles and such things. So we'll close that. Now to fix this, you can click the model and then click extensions. And this is where our mesh tools will have installed. So by using mesh tools, we can reload the model just to make sure that it wasn't the model's fault or maybe it was the program. But in this case, nope, still broken. So from here, we can try doing a few things. So we can check the model and that'll just come back with the, oh, is not watertight air, what we saw. 
The other thing we can do, so we're just hitting extensions and then going down to the mesh tools again, is we can fix simple holes. So if we click that button, it will run it if it needs to, but you can see here the mesh needs more extensive repair to become watertight, which means that this mesh fixing tool right now can't actually fix this problem. There's too much damage, I guess you could call it, or ill repair in the file. So we, we really don't have a chance to fix this with this tool. But just for fun, we can go back in and we can do fix model normals and nothing comes back. So with that, we think, oh good, hey, nothing came back. But you can see that we still have the splotchy air patch and it's really not fixed yet. So this is method one in Kira. So let's jump in with the same model now into Prusa Slicer. All right, so Prusa Slicer. Uh, we've, we've got it open here. We're gonna open our model. So let's hit File, Open. Now we can either do a few things. We can import the STL from the menu here, or again, you can click and drag. We, we've been through that in another video. There's many ways. If it's the default program, you can just double click it. So in Prusa Slicer, the model loads and we get that little green lobby looking creeper head, which is awesome. So it doesn't look like there's anything wrong. Like there's no visual cues here, but make sure to have expert mode turned on in the top right hand corner here. And you can see here that there's an explanation point beside the textured creeper head STL. If you had multiple models loaded into this platform, they all list here and you can see one by one what's wrong. So if we hover over this error, basically it says it wants to it auto repaired 198 errors, 94 backward edges, uh, 104 facets reversed. So there is actually quite a bit wrong with this model. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna right click and it's gonna start fixing it. So again, that's right click the explanation point in the triangle there and it will start fixing it. We're gonna click OK because the fix says it ran and finished. And you can see now that the air is gone, which means now the model is manifold, so watertight, and all those inverted facets and out of place triangles have been fixed. Now, NetFab is a very, very powerful tool. Uh, if we didn't want to slice in Prusa yet, or you haven't ever used it, you can still use Prusa to fix it. And then what we can do is export our build plate. So if we hit file and export, you can export it as an STL. And now you're going to get the model back out, same size, everything like that, but it's been repaired. The other way to repair in Prusa Slicer is you can right click the model and then in the menu here, if there is a problem, you can fix through NetFab here, but we've already done it. It's the same button on the other side. So if I click fix, it'll just go repairing, loading, done. So Prusa Slicer is a super powerful tool for mesh repair and we can see where Kira's mesh tools failed to fix this model. Prusa's NetFab tool and NetFab is a plugin, but Prusa's NetFab plugin has fixed the problem. So the next repair tool that we're going to talk to is actually brought to us by Microsoft and that's called 3D Builder. Now your Windows build may have it in it, it may not, but if you don't have it, you can come to the Windows Store, click the 3D Builder app and it will search it up and then once it comes up, we just hit install and that's going to add it to our Windows Start menu so we can actually open it up and start repairing with Builder. Perfect. It's installed. It's relatively painless. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Launch here, but it's important to remember that it's in your Start menu now, so you can just click Start and get to it like any other Windows app. So we're going to click Launch. Once we have Builder open, the first open might be a little slow, but after that it's pretty snappy. We'll click Open. And we have a 3D library here, but what we want to do is load an object. So if we come down to the corner here, there's this load object button that we're going to open. And then we'll go into our downloads folder and we're going to grab the textured creeper head. So it wants to know, do we want to import it in millimeters, inches, centimeters? Usually the first option that it gives you is the correct because most of our models are millimeter based. So just leave it at millimeters and import the model. And you can see here, uh, since it's our first launch, it does give us some options up here. Uh, we can just click Got It on those, that's fine. Um, 
it's a navigation help if you need it though. But we have one or more objects are invalidly defined. So we'll click here to repair. So basically it's saying this model's broken, let's fix it. So we click it, it'll run, it'll say repairing. If it can't repair it, an error message will pop up, but we can see that this fixed the model. So now all we really have to do is save it. Now we brought it in as an STL. So if I hit the save button here, it's gonna give us some warnings about, oh, you should use 3MF because it has the best compatibility, which is not lying, but we still wanna keep it as STL. So we're just gonna hit continue. And now that we've done that, we can close this and this mesh is now repaired. So it should be repaired in all of our slicers now because this was the original file. So if we go back to Kira, and if I delete this, I'm just going to go file open again. And we're going to open our texture creeper head and we can see that the timestamp has changed to most recently when I hit save. So it'll load in and it still gives us a manifold there, but we don't see the other window pop up. And you can also note that there is no more blotchiness on the top from the validation tool. So Windows Builder does a great job at fixing models so that they're printable. This model would now print fine. Does it do better than uh, NetFab or worse in 3D Builder? No, I think they're about the same, but NetFab's built right into Prusa. All right, so right now there's probably a few of you screaming at the screen saying, hey, why did we download Benchy? Well, we're gonna show you right now. We're gonna open up Benchy in Prusa Slicer. All right, let's grab that model. So again, we're gonna go down to the import, STL, and then we're gonna grab Benchy, which I'm sure some of us are sick of by now, but hey. So keep in mind, we've been printing this model for a long time. I'm not exactly sure of the release date. I could look it up, but I don't wanna pop out of this window right now, but it has been around forever. It's one of the standard benchmark tools, right? Because we've got inclines, we've got nice detail on the bottom here that say 3D Benchy, and we've got tight circles, overhangs, bridging, uh, dimensional accuracy. So we've got everything on it. It's a great tool. But let's direct our attention over here. So we could see here that Benchy loads with 552 degenerated facets and 552 facets were removed, but we're still a little bit broken. So Benchy, a model that we've all been printing successfully for a very, very long time, actually the STL comes downloaded and it needs repairing. So let's do that again. So we're, we are gonna right click the triangle. It's gonna fire open the repair process and talk to the service to fix the model. And then once it reloads, we should have a repaired Benchy. So let's see, let's see how it goes. All right, so we have the model repaired window. Let's click okay, because until you click okay, this explanation point doesn't go away. So don't, don't uh, judge on the fix process until you click okay. Ah, so we have a repaired Benchy now. And now we can see the triangle's gone. So now if we were to hit slice in Prusa and send it to one of our printers, we will have a better chance at success. This will cause uh, less anomalies in the print process. So it helps us actually better troubleshoot problems with a printer, not necessarily the slicer. So there you have it. Three really quick tools. The Kira one works sometimes, 50-50. Uh, I haven't had a lot of luck with it, so I usually do rely on actually Prusa Slicer. I really like the NetFab, uh, the fixed model tool inside of Prusa there. 3D Builder is another go-to of mine where if I want to modify a model or scale inside at the same time as repair, I will open it in 3D Builder. It's, it's a simpler platform, but remember it is not a slicer. So in 3D Builder, you're going to be opening it up. You're gonna be saving it and then importing it back into a slicer. But 3D Builder out of the box can do some pretty powerful mesh repair, all for the low, low cost of $0 if you own Windows 10. So those are the three options. Now, people ask us all the time, hey, what slicer is the best? What do you guys use? And, and I guess the answer to that question is you've seen the tools and they exist in Prusa, Kira, Simplified right they, they all exist but for me 
Prusa's Slicer right now has a better repair tool. So if I'm doing a model that I know is damaged, I'll jump into Prusa. It, it does a fantastic job, probably one of the best. And again, if you wanted to bring it back into another slicer like Kira or Simplified or Patheo or even Idea Maker, you can bounce out of those and then put them back in. But I think uh, as a tool goes, Prusa Slicer has the most tools in its toolkit right now. So that's our answer. Prusa Slicer, but we use everything. <laughs> so I hope you guys have found this informative, fun, learned a little on the way. You guys are awesome. Remember, hit that subscribe button and like the video and share it with some of your friends. Until next time, have a good one.